Hey T heads, this is Don from Rayleaf. In this quick video, I'm gonna be talking about how best to hold your Gong Fu teapot. And this may seem obvious to some of you out there, maybe you've got your technique down, but this is something that I've actually struggled with over the past few years, trying to work out the best holding style to suit all sorts of teapots and give me that control. I've tried out various different techniques, I've been playing around trying to invent new ones. Lo and behold, the traditional Gong Fu style of holding your teapot is what I have settled with, and I'm gonna be trying to break that technique down for you today because it may feel a little bit awkward at the beginning but as you sort of practice it it'll you'll build up some sort of muscle memory and it will feel a lot more natural I've got three teapots in front of me they're all in stock with us at the moment and I've picked these because they have different weights and different shapes in terms of the the size of the aperture of the handle which is going to be important so I've got a niching clay teapot here we've got a new in uh, jumping knife gentry teapot I love it amazing fast pour on this and we also have a jumping knife cup which has just come in and our new master Wu studios chowjo clay pot so how best to hold the teaware well you may have seen people uh, especially sort of elegant tea services where they use a sort of pinching technique where they use this technique and that's the traditional style and we're going to be breaking that down in its sort of parts so that you can practice that. But let's go through some other styles. Obviously, you can go for a two-handed technique where you're basically using your index, your middle and your thumb, sort of gripping the, the teapot and then using your other hand to sort of hold the lid in place. You shouldn't really go past the vertical, so it's unlikely that the lid is gonna come off unless you've got a very loose fitting lid, but it sort of gives you some element of control and allows you to control the movement a little bit. What you're trying to do um, when you're having a grip is control two axes. You're controlling the left right axes and the up down axis. So holding two fingers on the uh, handle will allow you to control the left right, but you may feel, especially with heavier pots, that when you grip it, ugh, it's falling, right? So you need some support there. And so those are the two axes that you're trying to control. So yes, you can use the two-handed technique like this, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm gonna to be talking about one-handed techniques. And the one that you may see commonly being used, especially in a more, let's say, farmer style, if you like, is taking your middle finger, wrapping it inside the, uh, the handle itself, putting your thumb on top and just flipping your wrist, right? So that's a classic sort of, you see that a lot. And that's a very sort of quick, easy and convenient possibly way of doing it. But you sort of don't have much control over the left, right axis. You've got a fair amount of control on the up, down axis, but not so much here. So if you were trying to serve people, it's a bit awkward. So if you, if you were pouring directly into cups, you're sort of a bit restricted in this movement here. There are variations, so you can take the middle and you can put the index finger on top, so sort of like a gun sort of shape, and you can do that, but the same thing applies. It's good on the up-down, because this fourth finger is really supporting the weight of the pot, but it's not very good in the left-right. And so you may see in videos, I do this a lot, that's how I pour, because it feels very convenient. There are um, other disadvantages with this style. Uh, one of the clear disadvantages is when you've got a small pot with a small hole, you can't fit your finger in. And so then you're changing style for the size of the pot. And that's why I brought all these different uh, teawares with different sizes, because I wanted to find a style that suits all teaware, and that makes it impossible. The other thing is that if you've got, say, a medium size aperture like this, when you put your index finger in, there's a high chance that the outside of your index finger is gonna touch the surface of the pot and you're gonna get burnt potentially because, you know, it's uh, clay and it's gonna be um, having a lot of heat um, coming off it. So for those reasons, I didn't feel comfortable with that technique. And so I tried different things. I was sort of like thinking, how can I like do it with the index finger inside? And, you know, I was trying all sorts. None of them worked. And so I went back to the basics, went back to the classics and just thought about how you hold a pen, right? So holding a pen, having, you know, your middle finger and your thumb 
you know, supporting it and the index finger just sort of adding another level of control. And that is the classic style. So holding a pen, holding a chopstick, that sort of pinch technique is the classic style. And that, as I said, is sort of easy to do with small pots like this, but with larger pots, I felt like I was losing control in terms of the up-down movement. I felt like I couldn't hold it and there was a lot of pressure being put on this uh, middle finger. But let's go through it. This is the best way, I think, for you to hold your teaware. First of all, index finger out, find the um, top of your lid because you want to have control or an element of extra control by holding this, uh, the knob at the top of the um, uh, pot. Now you can also use that index finger to slide over the, you know, uh, hole in the actual uh, knob itself, which will stop the flow of the uh, liquor. You may see that being done where they, you know, stop the flow if they're serving people. So that's up to you. But the first thing is finding your position with the index finger, in my opinion, because if you go in with this movement here, you might find that you're actually short and then you're stretching for um, finding this, um, this support. So that's my first tip, find the support first. Then use your middle finger and thumb and pinch. But if it's a small pot, the pinch is gonna work fine. So doing this is gonna work fine. But for larger pots with more weight, you are going to need for that middle finger to just go into the handle a little bit. Not in, like as in the sort of gun approach, but just in a little bit, just to give it a little bit of vertical support there. So index finger in, I hope you can see it. Index finger in, and then I'm just putting this, this middle finger slightly into the pot. Let's see if I can do it this way. It's not gonna be easy, but that, and then slightly into the pot, and then I'm pinching up here, right? So that's the, the, the position for my fingers for slightly heavier teapots. But then it still feels like cumbersome. This is gonna fall. And that's where these two fingers come in. These two fingers need to nudge up underneath and support the weight. So index finger on, these uh, thumb and middle finger in here, and then use your, your uh, fourth and little finger to support the weight. And that is the way that I like to grip my pots, right? As I said, if I was going to be using a smaller one, then there's less support needed from the fourth and, and um, small finger. I would still find my position and I would probably, you know, these are relatively free. These, these fingers are relatively free, but you know, still curl them in so it looks a bit more dainty and you can control. We're gonna talk about the tilt afterwards, but that's the, the grip. You can see it on the niching. Finding the, the uh, knob on the top of the lid, index finger, sorry, middle finger and thumb on the actual uh, handle and then using the fourth finger and backing it up with the, the little finger to give you this. Okay, it's gonna look a bit awkward because I'm having to tilt my body, but this sort of grip, right? So once you've got the grip down, it'll become second nature. It takes a little while for you to get used to it, but it becomes second nature. And of course you can go in first with your fourth and, and last finger and put the index finger on top, find your range and then pinch. So you might have a different sort of order of doing things. I like to make sure I know where my index finger is and then find the other support, right? And you know, it, it's something that I still need to practice because I've only just settled on it, um, but it, it's becoming easier. And the great thing about this is you've got control left, right, you've got control up, down, um, even with heavy pots, especially as I said, if you just put that middle finger slightly into 
the pot and you will find the right sort of comfort zone for you. Now let's talk about how you actually maneuver and control the pot. In order to do that, I'm gonna fill this with water. This is just cold water because we don't need to brew anything here. And obviously that's gonna add a whole extra amount of weight, right? So I've got my grip. Now, what I want to do here is I want to try to keep my elbow initially down. And when the elbow is down, I want this pot to be just slightly raised from horizontal. So that would be horizontal. That would be slightly raised, so just slightly raised from horizontal. And then in order to pour, what I'm essentially doing is, you know what, I'm just gonna pour into the tray because then I can, think you can see it better, is I'm lifting my elbow. So you can see that the shape of my arm, there's a slight bend in my wrist here, but not a huge bend in my wrist, right? It's just a slight sort of neck bend of the, um, of the wrist here. Because what we want to try to avoid is putting too much pressure on the wrist. Okay, so we're here and now we work with the elbow. So the elbow raises, and that is your pouring mechanism. You're not pouring with the wrist. That causes a lot of stress, especially with heavier pots, that on your wrist. And I think that that's not something that's comfortable over a long session. So index finger, fourth finger, find your pinch, lift, sort of focus on keeping your shoulders flat and your elbows sort of down at the beginning so you find your just over horizontal so it's slightly angled up as you can see and then lift your elbow and if you need to move move with the whole arm don't try don't move with your wrist because that, again that causes a lot of pressure but you can move with your arm you know and control it like this like this and that fluid motion is what i'm trying to practice when i'm brewing my tea um, i'll show it to you on the niching so you can see it there. Again, find your grip, right? If you feel uncomfortable, put it down, start again. You want to find every pot is gonna have a slightly different feel in terms of where it lands on your fourth finger. Sometimes it will land between your first knuckle and your fingertip. Sometimes, most of the time, it will land in this middle section here. Um, sometimes it'll be sort of in between. This one is sort of actually here for me, right? And then find your sort of, you know, your position where you've got just a slight sort of bend and then you're moving like this. What you want to try to avoid to do is lifting your elbow like that because that doesn't look good, it's not good for you either. So you should only need to tilt the pot that much. If you feel that at the end of the pour, you feel you need to, to get more out of it somehow, then at that point you can drop your wrist, but just for that last bit of the pour, you're not doing it for the whole pour and then like your wrist is in this, in this position, which is not really, it doesn't feel good, it's not good for the flow of everything. So just, you know, using, using the elbow to control it and then dropping it at the end. And I have done tests where, yes, I am that, that geeky, where I check the, the speed of pour of a pot. And actually, you don't need to go vertical in order to speed up the pour of the pot. Um, I found that, you know, if you're doing just an angle like this, so you're, you, you're, you're, you're in this position, you lift your elbow and you're doing this, this is actually gonna empty the pot pretty much the same speed as if you were like straining. But just at the end, you can then just sort of tilt again. Um, and I will just show you one last time in this Chaozhou clay pot. And then I'll let you just practice amongst yourselves. But you can obviously let me know if you find a better technique. As I said, I have been trying, but have not found one. So here, index. Um, pinch and then just supporting the weight with my uh, fourth finger, you know, making sure that I've got a good set point here with this slightly raised from horizontal and then just lift. And it actually becomes actually quite a fluid motion where every movement is sort of pivoting from the elbow, right? And then once you get to the point where you feel like it's nearly, it's pretty much finished or empty, 
you can just sort of tip for those last few drops if you want rather than sort of raise too much and then you're going to be raising your um your shoulder too much so that is my technique and well, it's not my technique at all that is the traditional gong fu style technique as far as i have sort of broken it down let me know if you've got any corrections i'm working on it myself just to try to become make it part of my sort of muscle memory because finally I have decided upon the best way to hold the pot after many, many sort of years of tinkering and playing around and trying to figure it out for myself. Um, so I'm just want to hone in that sort of muscle memory and make it feel more natural, but it is definitely getting there and it definitely gives you the most amount of control. But do let me know your own techniques. That's it, Tea Heads. Check out our other videos, Taste Our Teas, wherever you're in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.